Morning, John. Speaking of marriage stuff, Catherine and I recently went out of town to celebrate her birthday, and there's a little bit before that. I had a big birthday party. I did. We haven't done a lot of big birthday stuff over the last few years, but then last year for Catherine's birthday, I got my chemo port placed, so it felt like maybe we should do some celebrating. This is a secret, but eventually birthdays stop being about celebrating the fact that you were born, and they start being about celebrating the fact that you're not dead yet. Our little vacation was very fun, but it was also, as you say, uh, it was ours, so like I wasn't thinking a lot about content the whole time. One of the things that we did while we were traveling is we saw some old friends from like grad school era who we haven't seen in a long time. And while we were hanging out, I, you know, people came up several times to take pictures or just to say hi, and that's great. But at the end of it, they were like, oh, Hank's like famous famous. And I think some point in the last few years, like that did happen. And being famous is weird, especially when people are always like, oh, how are you doing? Because like they saw a video a year ago and they haven't seen any since, so they don't know if I'm okay. And look, I also don't know if I'm okay. But as far as I know, I am okay. Anyway, being famous is weird, but it, oddly enough, it's not the weirdest thing that I am. Like being one of the two guys who's built like this maniacally powerful secret society is weirder. It's not a secret secret society. Like anybody can join up, but most people choose not to because most people aren't like this. That job is much more quiet and most people don't know about it. And it is also weirder than being like that science guy from TikTok. But I also have this other job that is also weird, which is that I'm just like a guy with a child and a marriage. I know it's not weird in that most people don't do it, but it is weird in that like I have these people who I share my life with. Like one day I met a girl at college and now our genes are in the same child. Oftentimes I want to be that guy. I want to live that life. However, at one particular moment, a thing occurred and I did find myself suddenly in the process of making a YouTube video. Like, it's it's in there, you know, it's ingrained. But it's a weird YouTube video, and it's a short video, so I'm gonna put it in the middle of this other YouTube video. So here it is, for the very first time, a Vlogbrothers video inside of a Vlogbrothers video. Good morning, John. We're going to the Erratic Rock. Rock is from where we're from. It's from where we're from. Glacial Lake, Missoula. This is where Christmas trees come from. Sounds like I was being facetious, but it actually is. Why would you need a picnic table when there's a rock? You have a child. You have a child. You must be so proud. All right, Catherine, how'd this rock get here? Many years ago, there was a rock. It was just minding its own business. Yeah. The Rocky Mountains, generally. Yeah. And I don't know if you've heard of this, but there are some glacier stuff. And because of the way the landscape was, a bunch of dams built up in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, of ice. And then those dams got breached. Everything that was behind the dam went flying out of it real fast. Cataclysmic. And anything that was in the way or like in the water stuck in the ice. Yeah, all the big punks of ice. Got pushed out towards the, what is called the Pacific Ocean now. Yeah. Along the way, stuff fell out. Mm-hmm. And just got Stuck places. Yeah. Places. So you find these, these kind of rocks all over that. And this is a very large glacial erratic. This is a large glacial erratic. That is why it is called the erratic rock. That's a smaller glacial erratic. <sighs> but still a big one. There aren't rocks like this here. And when they started to find rocks like this here, they were like, what the heck happened? How did that get here? And that's how they started to build the story of these giant ice dams. Sometimes we talk about theories in terms of proof for them, mm. but actually what it is is to what extent the theory explains things that we see that we are confused by. That's true. <laughs> is that for me? Mm. You can have some of it for sure. I would love some. That's the road we were on when we were like, it says erratic rock. <laughs> <laughs> quick! Quick, <laughs> quick turn. turn. <laughs> Flowing with 10 times the combined annual volume of all the Earth's rivers. <laughs> John, that was the erratic rock. I'll see you on Tuesday. One thing that I, I don't hear discussed often in the context of the Lake Missoula floods is that like there were people in North America when that happened. And like, we don't have like proof of this, but there were also people in the places where the flood went. And the floods would not have left anyone. 
like they would not have left trees. They would not have left grass. These floods would have at times traveled over 80 miles per hour and delivered more energy than 10,000 atomic bombs. I generally find myself of the opinion that like the apocalypse has not happened, but it happened for them. Simply like an instantaneous winking out of everything that was there caused by nothing more than a fluke of geology. And our memorials to that loss are consigned to roadside curiosities visited every once in a while by a couple of people with a birthday cake. Time heals all wounds, I guess, but usually just through forgetting. John, I'll see you on Tuesday.